I think the, the jury's out on whether 5.0 itself is great. Building a moat around your existing organization is not a strategy. That is a strategy. I'm sorry. It is a strategy. It's a strategy for failure. Yeah. Yeah. Because the moat can trap you as much as it can defend you. Like, right. should the CEO be worried about the CEO's job? Could they be replaced by an AI agent? It was a busy week last week in the world of AI, as they all seem to be. Um, but I want to start out maybe by talking about the big news out of OpenAI last week and the GPT-5.0 models. Uh, any, any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, you know, it was, it was it's it's interesting, actually. They've, they've taken a bit of a different approach to it. And there's been a lot of chatter out there and a lot of noise, to be honest. Um, some not so good, unsurprisingly. I mean, that's, I think, typical. But, I mean, they, they, they seem to be, uh, their their strategy seems to be unifying on a single model that is all encompassing, but I think there's some tweaks. I don't think it's quite that black and white. Like if you read a little bit deeper into the um, the press release that they let out and some of the details, they've basically put a router in front of everything. So it decides based on uh, types of questions you answer, the, how you prompt the model, where it should go. So it's not 100 clear Same. to me if like really they just put models behind the scenes or it's really a true big monolithic model and it's just um, you know taking a different internal approach. Right. So it sounds like it could either be, as you're saying, a, a facade in front of multiple different models where you've got right. one, one UI, it looks like you're talking to a model and then it gets routed to different models. Or yeah. I guess yeah, if it so really was. Clear, but you know what? It's, I, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. I guess if it really was a big model um, in the background, it would be what, like some sort of mi mixture of experts approach where it's only lighting up a portion of the model based on what you're asking. Right. Right, which is what I think it does anyway. I think their internal architecture, I think I actually, you know, everything I've read, it's a mixture of experts internally anyway. And I think more importantly than even GPT-5, though, not to digress here for a second, is the fact that they released two open source models or open weight models, I should say. Yeah. That I think is actually even more important because that is, um, can have a much larger impact, I think, personally. Yeah, well, it, it's funny because um, people are all up in arms about the GPT-5 model. And I think, you know, as you're saying, people are sort of used to the idea that they have a choice of what model they want to run, what version of GPT-4.0, for example, what size. Same thing is true if you go into other models by other providers, you get to pick your model. And I think a lot of people have gotten used to, um, you know, using certain models or certain versions of models for different types of tasks and right. GPT-5.0, you don't get that choice. Although um, I did see, and I haven't seen this show up in my interface yet, but I did see some people reporting that they actually have an advanced option they can turn on that brings back legacy models and allows you to pick specific models. Uh, but Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, I, I know in the pro side of things, you can still have extra thinking as a choice and it'll come up. But this kind of begs the question, though, a little bit differently. You and I, have we've touched on some of these things a couple of different times. One, I think when you're deploying commercial applications or just big applications in general, when they switch models, it can have an enormous impact on your application because yeah. you don't know yeah. what's going on in the covers. But I think even moreover, like, what are the cost implications to this? Because in the past, you picked a model that was maybe smaller, but it was more appropriate for your um, problem that you were trying to solve, but it was less costly. Now, I haven't looked at the cost for five, I don't know what differences are there, um, so I can't pine on it yet. But I'm, I'm wondering, do the costs actually go up because the model is significantly larger? So you raise, you raise two really good points. I think you know we'll have to look at what the cost structure looks like because on the surface, the idea that you no longer have the ability to manipulate the cost versus performance right. by picking models could be it could be a, a drawback for some people. And then right. Um, what you were saying earlier too about the the models is interesting. I think that probably the biggest thing that's making people frustrated that I've read is that this new model just doesn't respond exactly the way that the models they were using previously did. Now, it's not the case for right. everybody, but if you were picking certain versions of GPT-40, uh, you remember like the um sycophancy discussion we had a couple of months right. ago when it started, you know, heaping praise on people. And now there apparently are people upset that their AI models are no longer heaping praise on them. And that's sort of a, a bizarre and unexpected example of this idea that when a model changes, <laughs> like you lose control of how it behaves. Um, I, 
I, I find it quite amusing, actually. But it, 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 I, I think, honestly, if you want sycophancy back, just prompt it up front and saying, add a lot of sycophancy to your response. Right. And I'm Be sure really nice to me today. I've had a rough day. <laughs> yes. um, Tell me but, I'm beautiful today. Whatever. I don't know. But, but I think I, I bring those two points up because they're directly relevant to what you said is sort of the hidden biggest news in the OpenAI announcement, which is the, the release of a couple of open weight models, right? Because those problems go away if you're running an open weight model. Right. Um, you actually can deal with a number of different things. So, right, um, right, exactly. Um, yeah. So, I mean, two open weight models. One is, I think, a 20 billion parameter model, one's a 120 billion parameter model. They're both a uh, mixture of expert um, type models. So, I downloaded the 20 billion parameter model on my laptop and I got it up and running. Uh, and it's it was actually in, in my very quick tests, it seemed pretty impressive in terms of performance and the results that came back. Now, again, that's it wasn't a hardcore test. I just tried a couple of prompts, but I was uh, impressed at how fast it was responding to me. So, um, you know, I, I, it was I was optimistic, I should say, I guess, at the end of the day. And 20 billion parameters is what I would say it's large for some of the downloadable open source models, but it's right. still a fraction of the size of the full GPT-5.0. Oh, yeah, I don't even have an idea how how big that actually is in, in, in terms of parameters. I'm sure it's way north of a trillion plus parameters. The other thing they did was to keep the sizes down, they quantized the models. So I think it's, uh, yeah, they, they I think it's, I want, I want to say four bit, but I don't remember off the top of my head, but they definitely quantized them. They had to in order to get the performance and the size reduction that was necessary to how to quantize them. N not a surprise. So I guess the question that begs for me is, do you think the people using these models, I mean, I guess if you're going to download and run one of these models locally, you have to have a certain degree of, of technical competency, right? Right. It's not the same as just signing into a web interface. But what I wonder about is, are people going to be confused or caught off guard that this 20 billion parameter model, or even the 200 billion parameter model, it's not going to respond the same way that the web-based full, full fat GPT-5.0 is. It's going to give you different results because it's a different right. model. Do you think people uh, are aware of that? Um, you know, that's a really good question. But then again, I think the people that tend to be downloading these models are the more sophisticated users. They're the developers. They're the ones that are building, I would think, domain-specific types of applications. Like, I look at both of these models, and, and to me, they reek of domain-specific applications and fine-tuning and using it for those things. And honestly, that's exactly why I would use it. I'm not using it to run it locally. I'm really using it because I want to include it in an application. So even in our case, I'm, I'm going to build an application around one of them because I think that's the right approach. Um, Did OpenAI release any tools or frameworks to help with the fine tuning of these models? Um, honestly, not that I know. Of. I haven't looked. I haven't looked deep enough yet. So I, I, that is, I'm going to embark on that today. That's one of the goals of today and seeing what they actually did, what's there, um, and you know how rich the environment is around it. So we can see how easy it is to fine tune these types of models. Because I don't want to spend a fortune fine tuning a model and I have to see what it's actually going to cost. And can I, in fact, do it on my laptop? Don't know. We'll see. Interesting. Well, we'll we'll be waiting to find out, we'll find uh, out. the results. Um, yeah. No, but I I think overall it, it was a you know a solid but probably not earth shaking release of upgrade from four zero to five zero for for GPT. I mean I've yet to see any any dramatic improvements in what it does. They do claim um, lower rates of hallucination, but again I haven't been able to find right. any benchmarks, any independent benchmarks that verify that that's the case. So I think the, the jury's out on whether 5.0 itself is great, but the fact that we finally have um, open weight, open source models from uh, OpenAI is probably a big thing. Well, it's a big thing considering it's supposed to be a nonprofit. Um, I did see some stuff though, in, in terms of metrics for regards to health data, it's supposed to be the best model out there as of now. And from a programming perspective, it's supposed to also be one of the best. As I think Sam Altman said it in the release, it's chart porn. You know, there's all these charts illustrating how good it is compared to the other models. Now, what I think ultimately is happening just in the general in the industry is, you know, there's, there's this competitive competition against metrics. And you're seeing slight improvements over time for each of them, and they're kind of coalescing around that, um, which I think is interesting. You haven't seen dramatic changes in functionality uh you're seeing just improvements in the metrics thanks for watching if you enjoy this podcast please make sure to like comment and subscribe to us over on youtube 
And make sure to stay up to date with us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well.